Welcome to season four of the Florida Institute for Child Welfare podcast. I am Jessica Price, your host. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Elizabeth Winter, Executive Director of the Selfless Love Foundation. We will hear Dr. Winter talk with several youth who have lived experience and valuable perspectives. They will discuss topics that relate to gaining access and opportunities as youth in our child welfare system. Let's get started. Today we are discussing Florida's tuition and fee exemption for young adults who are aging out of the foster care system. And I'm so excited to be joined by Lisa Jackson, Senior Program Director at the Center for Academic Retention and Enhancement at Florida State University. Dina Santos, a young adult with lived experience in the foster care system. And so I'm going to start with Dina. And Dina, if you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your experience in the foster care system and all the great things that you are doing right now. Hi guys, so my name is Dina Santos and I'm currently 19 years old. I was in the system when I was 17 and when I aged out, I went into extended foster care and I was able to use the tuition waiver to attend college. So I'm currently a sophomore at Florida State College at Jacksonville and I'm pursuing a bachelor's in psychology and then hopefully I get my master's in it as well. My main goal is to open a nonprofit organization in Jacksonville for foster youth so that they can have all the resources they need. Wow, that giving back is amazing, Dina. And you are also part of a youth council there and part of One Voice Impact. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure, yes. So I hope to lead a youth advisory board in Jacksonville connected to Florida Family Support Services. And here it's fairly very new. So we're still figuring things out. My favorite thing about it is it's just me and a bunch of other foster youth. It's five other young adults and they're all girls. It can be a little bit challenging, but it's been good. It's nice to have other foster youth around. I've been doing some work with One Voice Impact, so that's been nice too. One Voice Impact is one of my main motivators for what made me want to open my own nonprofit organization in Jacksonville. I see how well you guys work together and see how motivated you guys are to bring foster you together. And that's just what I want to be able to do here. That's fantastic. And youth voice is really important, right? Having the ability to use your voice, not only to advocate for yourself, but to advocate for others in the system. So I'm going to turn to Lisa. Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about the campus-based coaching program that you run at Florida State and what that's all about? Here at Florida State University, we have the Unconquered Scholars Program, which is a campus-based program designed to provide support, guidance, advocacy, voice to students who have been in the foster care system or those experiencing homelessness. It started in 2012. We really admire and respect the expertise that youth coming out of the system have as what their experience is like in higher ed. And we use that to be sure that we inform our programming to provide whatever guidance and support they're requesting. Thanks, Lisa. You know, what's so exciting in the state of Florida is the tuition waiver for youth that have aged out of the foster care system. And I mean, that's amazing. And I understand that that's available to youth up until age 28, which is fantastic. Dina, can you tell us a little bit about what that tuition waiver has meant for you and your goals for the future? So when I was 17, I was on the brink of becoming homeless, and I didn't think college would even be an option for me. And once I sat down with my foster care agency, they basically explained the tuition waiver to me, and it changed my entire life. The tuition waiver allows me a chance to be able to attend college and not come out of it with debt or be drowning in student loans. And because of that, most of my life I have worked. And now I don't have to overwork myself. I can just focus on school primarily. And that's a huge blessing. And Dina, you said you found out about it through your foster care agency. What would you tell foster youth that are getting ready to age out about the tuition waiver? How does it help? How does it work? How do you use it when you get to school? So I will tell foster youth to ask a lot of questions, to ask all the questions that they have, to connect with their caseworker. Caseworkers have a lot of children on their plate, so if their caseworker isn't able to answer them on time, to connect with 
their caseworker's supervisor or ask their caseworker if they could have their supervisor's number because that usually speeds things up. The supervisor is usually who signs off on these tuition waivers in the first place. Basically, they will email you a tuition waiver and then you will take that tuition waiver and you email it to your school's student financial service. At least that's how it works for me. The biggest piece of advice I would give is to do everything in advance. Do things months and months in advance. Do your research, figure out your school, figure out how your student financial service office works, figure out their hours, just because sometimes it takes a while to process. Sometimes they'll look through the waiver and they'll tell you that the way the waiver is printed or the way that it's signed is not like they need to look over it again because my specific office is very thorough about it. So there was like a misspelling and they wouldn't accept it. And I almost wasn't able to attend any of my classes. So you just have to be extremely thorough and precise and prepared. Precise, prepared, and persistent. I think those are the three words I heard you say. So I think that's important. And as you mentioned, ask, ask, ask. That's really important. Lisa, I'm going to turn to you because it's great that tuition and fee exemption, I mean, that all sounds wonderful. But obviously, there's other costs involved with going to college. And so can you talk a little bit more about what you should think about as they're getting ready for this adventure? Absolutely. That's really a great point. And I think it can be sort of a misconception that a youth who is about to attend college will have all of their expenses paid for by the waiver, right? That just covers tuition fees, but there are all sorts of other expenses that may or may not be covered. There are living expenses, rent, food books. A lot of students really want to do international travel, right? Have these really amazing student life experiences. And those things aren't covered by the exemption. So those are things to consider as a youth using the exemption arrives to a campus. And I understand that there's a lot of resources that colleges offer our youth. How would they find out about campus-based coaching? I know there's a program called Positive Pathways that oversees that across the state. How do youth get connected in that, foster youth, and what other kind of services and supports might they find through that campus-based coaching? It is legislatively mandated in the state of Florida that every campus have a point of contact for youth to process that waiver. And the Positive Pathways Network is a great clearinghouse for that information. So a youth can check out their website and actually drill down to their college or university and find the contact information for the person at their institution to be that first, you know, reach out. In Dean's case, how do I process this waiver? Who do I talk to about getting additional resources where food is concerned? Or do they have maybe a housing assistance program? Here at FSU, we just launched housing for students experiencing homelessness at no cost to them. Then being able to connect with the right person on campus can really make a significant difference in their stability and access to the things they need. Thanks, Lisa. Dina, will you please share with us the tuition waiver covers not just universities like Florida State, which is a four-year university, but it covers a lot of other things. But can you tell us sort of that thought about going away to college or community college? Tell us how you came to that decision and how you found your way because high school, it's much more structured, but college is much more free form. So tell us a little bit about how you found your path. I was not told about Positive Pathways. My caseworker did tell me that there was someone on my campus that is supposed to help me specifically because I'm a foster youth. She gave me that number in that email and for weeks I called and no one answered. So everything I had to figure out on my own, it just wasn't working. I almost gave up. I started advocating because even though I was able to figure it out, I have realized that there's going to be a lot of other foster youth who wouldn't be able to. So I told the supervisor of my specific program and he called up the school and he basically gave it to them. He got them to get their stuff together. So really like advocating, like not every school is going to be able to have it together. So if they don't, I really want to advise you to speak to their agency about it because someone will speak up for you. What I went through is not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be that way. But my specific journey with college is kind of crazy. I actually didn't attend all four years of high school. My parents kept me out of high school for the first three years. And then I finished all four years within three months. 
And I actually graduated early. So once I was done, I was kind of working full time to take care of my sisters. And then once I was done taking care of them, I was just working full time because that's what my brain was wired to do. I actually was kind of scared to enroll into college. It was kind of like that was my dream. And then it was right in front of me and I didn't want to do it anymore. So three days before registration was about to close. I just registered without even thinking about it. I enrolled and I told myself that I'll give myself one semester and see how it goes. I kind of just jumped into it. I was really scared. I didn't have a normal high school experience. So going into college, I'm not going to have the knowledge that other kids had. So I was really just diving in from the deep end. And I had to quit working because I was working overnight shifts and doing college during the day and I was starting to get sick. My body wasn't able to handle it. I did not like the fact that I wasn't working. I wanted to always be financially secure, which I noticed other foster youth will want to cling on to as well. They would rather be more financially secure than anything else because of the way that some of their lives have turned out. But really just letting go and having faith in the system and the resources that they gave me is what started my journey and what really accelerated it. And it has given me everything that I have today. College has really changed me. It has helped me mature. It has taught me how to time manage. It has taught me how to rest. It has taught me how to not only celebrate my successes, but also my failures. It has taught me how to be able to speak in front of other people and create clear and concise statements. It was clear and concise to me, Dina. You not only found the tools and the resources through people, but you also had that inner strength, which I think is really important for all youth, not just for youth aging out of the foster care system, but for all youth. It's amazing the drive and your ability to advocate. I think that's so important. And so thank you for being who you are and being engaged. Lisa, I'm going to turn back to you. What more should youth know as they're sort of branching out into this? I spoke to a youth last weekend who wanted to go to Florida State and was worried about being able to get in. And I said, I believe there is another lane that you can go down that Florida State has created. And I think that's awesome. I think a lot of schools have specific resources for foster youth. And I know Florida State is, and I hate to keep being a Florida State advocate, but You know, I'm an alum, I got kids that are alums, and so I just think the work you do there is awesome. So if you'll share a little bit about Unconquered Scholars and the pathway for youth to get engaged in a university that they may think they may not be able to qualify for. It's actually been in the university's strategic plan for many years now to create a pipeline for youth coming out of the system into the university. And so the primary mechanism that most of the youth coming out of the system use to get into FSU is the summer bridge program. It's an alternate admissions mechanism into FSU, which adjusts the GPA requirements, the SAT and ACT score requirements compared to, say, a general admissions applicant. I think right now it's maybe a 4-3 weighted GPA for general applicants. And through the CARE Summer Bridge Program, we actually look at students who have a high school GPA of 3.0. So we're really able to remove a lot of the barriers that I think youth coming out of the system see as something that may prohibit them from coming to Florida State through the Summer Bridge Program. So I strongly encourage them to apply. And to anyone that's interested in applying anywhere, please give it a shot. Write a really robust essay. I review those essays all winter break. And that's one of the primary ways we get to know you as a student and an applicant. So let us know all about you. It really helps with the admissions process. Thank you. Dina, I'm going to turn back to you. Did you have something to add about that? Don't let someone tell you that you can't do it because there are options for foster youth or just youth in general. Thanks, Dina. I think the dreaming big is sometimes something we don't do enough of, right? You got to dream big. You could always step down, but you got to start big. And I think that's important for youth to know. And also, as we talk about the tuition waiver, I just want to remind folks that are listening that it's not just for university. It's also for technical schools, vocational schools. There are a lot out there. And we are so fortunate to live in the state of Florida where we have so many options. We have so many colleges and universities that are there for us and all great schools. Lisa, as we sort of close out, 
What might be some advice that you would give either youth that are listening today or child welfare professionals or those that are youth champions, youth advocates out there? What might you want to share with them about this tuition and fee waiver exemption? I would say to connect with the folks at the institution that they have a youth that's interested in attending to instill that hope in the youth that they will go to whatever institution they might be interested in, as Dina just shared, right? And please feel free to reach out to me directly if you are having a hard time connecting with someone at a particular institution, and we'll try and help your needs navigate that situation at their institution to process the waiver. I'd also encourage them to get a strong sense of how the waiver is processed at each institution because it varies. I'm at FSU, it's one and done until the student is 28. But being sure that the person you're working with understands that it may be that they have to do it every semester so that they don't miss specific deadlines and then have any delay in their financial aid processing, just being really informed about that process so that the youth they're working with isn't impacted negatively, I think is also really important. That's great. And I know that there is tuition waiver. There's some nuances with who can use it and who can't use it. And depending on when you aged out of the foster care system. So just a reminder, if anyone is listening who's become disengaged, they've aged out of the system and not taken advantage of the independent living resources, make sure that you reach back out to your child welfare agency, contact your independent living specialist, find out those answers, because there are some youth that are available who went to college and then find out years later that they had access to the tuition waiver. You know, you don't want to miss out. Again, college is not cheap. Colleges are expensive, worth every penny. But if you have that resource, you want to make sure that you use it. I'm going to just turn to Dina as we close out for any last tips or advice that she would like to give as our expert on the call. For foster youth who don't have a means of transportation to tour, you know, is there any way to get them from where they're at in Florida to be able to tour? Because I know that there are a lot of foster youth who don't have parents or people who are going to be able to drive them or they don't have their own means of transportation. That's a really great question. It's kind of varied over the years because of COVID. I think almost every institution in the country right now has a very robust virtual tour online because we couldn't tour people in person for quite a while. We've also had a lot of youth who have connected with local nonprofits in their area that do campus tours. And so we actually work closely with different nonprofit organizations across the state to host tour groups for youth aging out of the system to visit FSU and they actually come to our building and they meet a lot of the students who have very similar life experiences they do who are already students at FSU, which they have reported is really kind of helped normalize what it would be like to go to FSU. We even sometimes send them to a college class with one of our students so that they can get a sense of what it's like to go to the university. We do what we can to assist with that, but I would strongly encourage them to connect with maybe their independent living folks to see if they know resources in their area or other nonprofit organizations that may be doing those sorts of tours. I think that's a great question, Dina. And for the child welfare professionals that are listening, it definitely helps to take your youth on college tours. It gives them that opportunity to see and feel and touch what it might look like. And every college and university has a different energy and a different flavor. So it's great to see which is the best fit. But Dina, last question, what lasting advice would you give as a former foster youth that is living the dream and going to college? To advocate for yourself to always, always, always speak up. And if something's not right, be persistent about it. Like I said earlier, be precise, persistent, and always be prepared. (laughs) I would just love to second that. Please let us know. Reach out to the folks on campus. Let us know what's going on for you. Let us find ways to help connect you to the right people and resources. I really think that can make all the difference, even though that can be a very uncomfortable experience for the youth or the student involved. It's far better to get ahead of a crisis than to find yourself in one. So we want to try and be as proactive as we can. One last piece of advice is to seek out mentors. In college, a support system is very, very important. A lot of foster youth don't have a support system. When you have mentors, they're there to help you, tell you right from wrong and to really support you and just encourage you to advocate for yourself as well. So that's really what's helped me throughout 
all of college so far. And both my mentors are actually FSU alums as well. It's a love fest for FSU today. So I'm going to close out, but I just want to thank you guys so much. Lisa Jackson, you are such an angel and you're caring about these youth and your ability to provide that support system, a home away from home where they get their resource and they have folks that they can talk to that are going through a similar experience. And I think that's really key. And Dina, Wow, for youth that didn't have a normal high school experience, to be in a position to have those dreams and to have that persistence to achieve them is so admirable. And you are an inspiration for all the youth that are, I'm sure, listening today. So thank you so much. And I just want to let anyone know, if you are interested in the tuition waiver and you've gone down the path of asking your independent living specialist, you've contacted your university, you can't get the answers to the questions, I just want to let you know that One Voice Impact is a family and we're here for you. And you can always contact us. I'm going to give you the number at the Selfless Love Foundation. You can reach out. Our number is 954-372-7760. And again, that number is 954-372-7760. And Dina has offered, if any youth is struggling and wants some advice, she has offered connection to her to give you that. She loves to advocate for other youth, which is so beautiful. And so as we close out today, just a reminder, this is a series of six podcasts for youth by youth. And if you are a youth champion, please help us spread the message about getting former foster youth plugged into these incredible resources to assist them along their journey to adulthood. To learn more about One Voice Impact or to get involved in a local youth council, reach out to us. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram or email us at info at youthvoicenation.org. Thanks and have a great day.